Hello everybody, my name is Searching Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks video. And today I would like to talk about 10 tips on how to get better in the game World of Tanks. Um, this is due to the fact I already did that on my German channel. Um, it got a huge amount of feedback and many many people liked it a lot because apparently it helped them a lot. So yeah, I would love to show you those 10 tips plus one bonus tip and tell you a little bit what I think about everything which I'm going to say right here. So yeah, I think it's best we just start right off the bat with the first tip. And this is not every tree is the same. And this is a tip which I think is more for people which are just newly start with the game and get frustrated by different um, tank types or trees. And like a friend of mine started to play, uh, he's a German friend and started to play the game and obviously wanted to go for the Tiger 1 because obviously German fanboy. But the problem is like the Tiger line is not really that easy to play. The Tiger 1 doesn't really boast any armor for its tier to be honest. It is a really good sniper though. The Tiger 2 won't get any better and just the E75 will be better. While the E100 is again not that good because of the huge amount of gold spam in tier 10. So, what I want to say is that there are good trees, there are strong trees, but there are also bad trees. In a sense, like also the Leopard 1 tree at the moment, especially the tier 10 tank Leopard 1, is not really that good. While tanks like the Object 263 to Object 268 version 4 tree are immensely strong because at the moment how the current meta is evolving. Or things like the IS-7 tree or... So those are really easy to play trees. Sure, the IS is not the strongest armor tank, but still it can bounce sometimes some shots. The IS-3 is the same. The Object 257 is even getting better, especially with the very forgiving side armor. So yeah, if you're starting the game and want to grind through Get some advice from better players or from people which are actually um, having a lot of um, time put into the game. So they can tell you which tree is probably the best for you to learn the game. For, my, for me personally, I now start to play with my friend the Scout line from the German tree. And now I'll try to explain to him how the spotting mechanic works. Because if he learns how the spotting mechanic works, he can abuse that stuff and... Well, yeah, but this is a point which we are t going to talk about later. The second tip I have for you guys is always trade positively. What do I mean with that is, is basically when you have a tank like I3, which deals 390 alpha, and you are fighting against something like a T44-100, which, which deals 250 R, um, alpha, it's always beneficial for you to try to trade shots. Obviously, if he bounces on you, then it's perfect and you penetrate, then it's simply a wonderful trade. But if he penetrates you and you penetrate him, you are still having a better trade because you traded 390, HP, um, 390 damage for 250 damage. This is especially important when... <coughs> Excuse me. When you want to min max at the end of a game, like when the, when the score is like 10-5 and you want to get the most out of a ruffle stomp, it's the best idea is to trade your HP for more damage you can do. But also during the first stages of the game, it is always beneficial for you to try to always trade positively. For example, if you also play the Mauerbrecher, which is not really... It is a highly armored vehicle for lower tiers, but against higher tiers it's particularly um, weak, because everything feels a little bit flat and it's not really suited for tier 10 games. So, with this vehicle it's actually really important that, for example, if you fight against uh, a medium tank of the tier 10 um, status, like a Centurion Action X or a Leopard 1, it is great for you if you are able to hit him for one shot while he penetrates you for another one. Because then you trade 440 HP versus 390 HP. If you can manage to do that all the time, you will see that you will get much better at the game and that also your win rate should um, increase. Why exactly? Because you are trying or you are pushing out um, more damage than your tank has HP. It's also something really important. 
But yeah, also don't just like YOLO into something and then complain about your teammates that they didn't help you. That is per that's all your fault, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit little 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 little, little bit later. <coughs> Again, just try to trade positively. The third tip, <coughs> excuse me, I have for you is um, is that there are different ammunition types. So that sounds like a no-brainer, but many 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 times i see people just like not trying to shoot anything else except for standard ammunition or gold ammunition and sure i'm one of the guys which really do, do not like how the current meta is playing out with gold ammunition it's really annoying because um, effectively it nullifies the skill required for playing a decently armored tank like an e100 like a panzerkampfwagen 7 like a Batcher, for example. But there are also a problem with tanks like the Type 5 Heavy and the Opti 268 version 4, which simply have too much armor with no weak spots at all frontally. So, well, if you are a free to play player, I suggest to you to load a healthy amount of HG shells. Sure, some tanks' HG shells are really not worth talking about, like on the Panther 88 or, or generally on the 88mm gun. But there are certain circumstances where those 88mm um, guns are actually worth shooting some HE shells. Notably, for example, when you have a Waffen Waffel Waffenträger auf Panzer 4 in Gegner Team. Um, in the enemy team, not Gegner team, that's German, <laughs> or something like a Grilla 15 or Reimer Paul Borsig Waffenträger. If you're able to hit the gun shield of those tanks with HE, you will get a certain boost in your DPM. So it's always worth for you to get some HE with you. And don't forget, HE does most of the time damage. So I personally have at least two to five HE shells in my tanks. And this is due to the fact that sometimes there are tanks which are side scraping and they're like 21 HPs and you can't penetrate them with anything like with AP or APCR. Then you simply load an HE shell and finish him off. Maybe it needs even two shots because you're playing a Panther 88 with its um, weak HE shells. But in the end you are able to probably finish off a highly armored tank or something like a WZ 111-5A which is really strong when it's side scraping correctly and you can't get into its lower plate. What I want to say is obviously if you want to get better at the game you need to shoot gold ammunition. That's due to the fact that at the current moment the meta is involving into gold spamming and highly armored vehicles. In lower tiers it's not that big of a deal except for the Japanese heavy tanks, like a KV-3 has still its lower plate weak spot or its um, driver's hatch, those are still weak spots. The IS-3 still has its um, roof weak spot, so that's not a big deal, but for higher tiers, for tier 10 tiers, it's beneficial for you to at least load some gold shells and some HE shells to finish off low HP targets which are otherwise in a really strong um, position. Other than that, I have one final tip when it comes towards um, different ammunition types. If you see an object 268 version 4 or a type 5 heavy, spam the living hell out of gold onto these guys. Finish them off, they deserve it. Like, holy balls. Object 268 drivers, they deserve it so much. Seriously. <coughs> but yeah, the next tip is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I already talked about that once in the replay where I made several shots on the move and one of them hit it and finished off an enemy, giving me a kill plus um, turning the game into our favor. Sure, this tip is like more for people with a premium account because, well, you are able to, um, how should I say, you are able to um, use a little bit of your money and you won't lose anything in the end because you still have a premium account get 50% more credits. What I mean though is that the worst thing which can happen is that you hit an ally and sure that is a really darn frustrating when this happens but let's be honest you should normally see when there is the chance to hit an ally okay. Somebody in the German video said that they hit by accident a K, uh, with his KV-2 and AMX 12T from his team on the move and well one shot at him. Obviously this is really sad and it happens sometimes. Obviously it will be a laughter but yeah. 
but most of the time there won't be an ally in the way. And during my grind of the T-34-1 Chinese tier 7 medium tank, I shot a lot out of the move because I wanted to get into positions where I, um, well, because when I was in the position, I will be already reloaded because it has 8 seconds reload time or so. So um, most of the time I just shoot on the move and try to hit the enemy, probably get some auto aim on it and just blindly shoot. And I think around 10% of the time I actually hit and did some damage. And those 250 damage are going to sting a tier 7 or a tier 8 tank. So yeah, this is tip number 4. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, so take them. When you are on the move, when you're trying to get into good position, and if you obviously not do it with an auto loader, with an auto loader it's a little bit uh, different. But with most single shot tanks, it's actually a pretty good idea to do, even with a KV2, except when there is an ally in the way. <laughs> the next tip is map awareness, and I think many, many, many people and YouTuber talked about this so often, and I have to talk about it as well. Because it happens to me too. Even though I have 37,000 bells and 2,700 overall W8, it happens to me so often that I simply want to go into a good position where I know my tank would be great, but suddenly I'm there alone because I simply didn't look at the uh, minimap and I was just like, damn it, where is my team? And then I was just like, oh wait, right, it is not my team's fault to not go, not go there, it's my fault for not looking where, the, where our allies are. This is something which I see often and there's also something because many many people are going to rage about that because they're all like oh my gosh where is my team what are you doing blah 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 blah. But in the end if you know where your team is going you can adapt and this is also really important to adapt to a certain game situation and those tips are all they're not 100% solutions. Those are just solutions or tips to help you get better at different occasions and help you improve your gameplay. They won't make you from from now uh, from now to 10 minutes to make you a super unicorn. They won't. But they can gradually help you getting better at that game. And this is exactly with map awareness. You need to adapt to different game types. In the beginning of the game, you should probably go through your head like I'm a scout. For example, I'm on. Mm, let's go. Um, I'm, uh, for example, on Fisherman's Bay. We have other freeze. We have two other scouts. Maybe uh, let's just wait one second and see where our other scouts are going. If they are going at the same positions all at the same time, then it's obviously not a good idea for our team. But most of the time, you want to go into the middle position and try to spot the crossing heavies because that yields most of the time a lot of spot damage. But if they're already free scouts with you four, then eh, it's not a really good idea. So maybe try and go to another side and try to spot the other side. Then you probably get even more from it. So always, maybe every 20 seconds, try to look at the minimap and assess the situation. Am I at the right spot? Is my team backing me up? Should I retreat? Is there another position I can go? Those are like questions you should always ask yourself while you are doing that. Next tip is mods are your friend and maybe many many people will disagree with that and I um, I think highly of people from top clans like Fame for example in a EU server or go in which play without mods because they also need to play in the in the ESL of World of Tanks but nevertheless for new players mods can help you a lot especially with the current World of Tanks mod hub which they introduced on the EU server at least I'm not en entirely sure about ENA. You can let me know. It is uh, easy to get mods which are certified by Wargaming. I personally use the Pro mod and I have different stuff from there enabled, like achievements in game, like gun marks. And I think the most important, um, as I call it, the most important mod for new players is the mod which allows you to have a small little window which shows you the basic stats of an enemy which you're um, aiming at. It can help you uh, so much. For example, most of the time you can see if the enemy tank has a big or a small gun, like on a T95, like on the Amex M451-54. Those tanks, normally you can see what type of gun they have, but this mod um, exactly shows you what gun they really have. Um, let's be honest, I personally poke much, much more likely against a T95 with the small gun than a T95 with the big gun, which deals 750 alpha. <coughs> 
It also shows you like the basic armor stats, the basic fury range stats and the basic penetration and alpha damage stats. So you can assess the situation like, well, I have 400 HP, he deals 350 alpha or something. I could go for it, but it could still be risky or something like that. It really helps and I think if you're not going overboard with mods, it makes the game a much easier to play. And much, not much easier to play, but it makes, the, well, you get better because you get to know certain things without having to look it up always in the wiki. Next up is also a tip number seven, where I talked about in a video already. And this is, if you are top tier, play active. If you are flop tier, play reactive. Obviously, when you are flop tier, it's not that much fun. Like, like you're a tier seven tank and you have to face something like the SD1. You have legit no chance penetrating it frontally because the cupola is 220 millimeters thick. The lower plate, if hidden, is, well, not accessible and so on. But if you are top tier, if you are that ST1, try to play aggressive, pl try to play active, try to play or try to shape the game how you want it to be. Be that um, dick which rush, no, no, pushes a flank with your, with your allies and try to win the game. If you are um, the flop tier, it is better for you to try to search for opportunities to flank. Maybe even if you are a tier 7 heavy tank in a tier 9 battle, try to go with your allied heavy tanks and detrack. Like, it is probably so stupid, it doesn't give you a lot of W nade, but it can help your team win the game. Why exactly? When you are detracking a higher tiered opponent and he is standing there without a rep kit, well, he is literally poop out of luck. Because what does he want to do? He will just stand there and either get spammed by HE by you or gets finished off by your allies and what a and hey, you get profit because you detract him and you get detracking damage from it. What I want to say is if you are top tier, play active and don't try to camp. <coughs> Obviously this is a rule of thumb. Many tanks like a Stur Emil or something like E well E25 can actually play a little bit of aggressive. Um, but when it comes to TDs, especially sniper TDs, you can't really play that active. But you can take more advantageous positions. That was what you can do. Next up is a tip from a friend of mine from Legacy Clan. And this is tier awareness. And this means if you are playing something like a Tiger 1 or a KV3 or um, a T29, you need to know what can you face. Uh, obviously, you can face those tanks, which I already mentioned, but you can also face something like an IS-3 or a Tiger 2 or a Wiku 101P or something like a SD-1 and so on and so on. It is good for you to know what enemies you can face in your specific tier spread from plus and minus two. And if you don't know how to penetrate those people or these tanks, obviously you can watch videos like my how to penetrate guide, <laughs> hashtag self advertisement, or, and this is um, the better idea, go to tanks.gg and look up the armor model, because those armor models can help you so much. Like many, most tanks, not many tanks, but most tanks have somewhat of a weak spot frontally or have a cheeky position where you can pen them more or less easily. Or you will probably find out that the Object 705 and 705A's uh, engine armor is only 40 millimeters thick, meaning that something like an IS or IS-6 or something with 122 millimeter gun will penetrate that if you can shoot from above onto the engine deck. This is like something which makes you also a lot better player because then you finally start to understand what you can do against certain enemies. Other than that, on to tip number nine, which is don't rely on your team most of the time. Like, it is cool when you got another good player in your team and you know that if you take the shot, he can finish off the enemy tank. And but most of the time you should not do that. Um, it happened to me several times where I just rushed in trying to circle a TD and I had three people behind me and they just stopped and I was just like there with my pants down and it was just like, oh well, now that sucks <laughs> and I did. Um, you really need to focus about that, that 
you can't really um, rely on your teammates and uh, only if they are your platoon buddies. And this is also what I think, yes, Platoon has worse matchmaking. That's what some somebody said in my German video and I forgot it, but forgot it, but I forgot it there. But it's right, Platoon has worse matchmaking, but you can try to carry harder as a Platoon. Because then you have at least one or two people which you can, well, rely on. You can say, hey, you know, guys, try, let's try to YOLO that guy or rush that guy and get him out. Because when two or three people even are coming at the same time, well, even the best player can't do much against it. Even a type 5 heavy can't really do anything about it. He just gets rushed. So yeah, don't rely on your teammates, except you know they're good players. And probably play in platoon, get some friends together. It makes the game also much more fun. The tenth and final realistic tip is game mechanics. This is something you really need to figure out. Spotting mechanics, the bush mechanics, and how to penetrate mechanics. Those are really the basics of the game. If you understand that, especially right now in 1.0, the spotting mechanics, you will be far better off than most of the players in World of Tanks. If you know that if you're behind a bush, 50 meters behind it, and it gets, um, um, you get an obstructed view from it, like um, it's not, um, transparent anymore then you can shoot without the bush disappearing and you will still have its camouflage if you understand that it makes it so much easier to play and try to carry games other than that overmatch mechanics is important to know where you can penetrate different people with different calibers and so on if you understand that uh, there are many good articles in the world of tanks wiki so please go over there and have a look there because if you understand that, it is awesome. It makes the game for you much easier and, well, you can carry more games. But yeah, let's go to the bonus tip. And this is, I think, many people liked that, that I said that. And it's basically, tier 10 isn't the end game. And this is also for many new players. You don't need to rush a tier 10 tank and think, now you're done, now you got it, now you are the best player. That's not the case. Tier 10 at the moment is really a hard dash bad place, <laughs> to be honest, because it is a huge amount of gold spam, huge amounts of OP tanks, and especially now with the new May event coming up with Top of the Tree being the Object 268 version 4, it will be so annoying to play. What I mean is, you need to play that tier or that tank you like. If you like to play the Panzer 4 or Panzer 4H, with the derp gun and you like playing it then don't hesitate in playing it because this is a tank you'd like to play if you like to play the PZ Panzer 1C then go for it it's a fun tank it doesn't mean just because you play low tiers you not learn anything sure in lower tiers like 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 you don't really learn things like angling correctly and so on I think the best tier for learning that would be tier 7 even though it is really hard on tier 7 because when you get in tier 9 battle you are screwed most of the time. And I personally think with having every single tier 10 tank in the game except for the T22 medium because I'm not a rigger is tier 9 because tier 9 tanks are most of the time discount tier 10 vehicles like the T30, like the Amex M451, like the M53, M55 RT. All of those tanks, T-54 for example as well, many of those tanks are much more fun to play as a tier 9 tank than the tier 10 counterparts because tier 10 once again is a really try harding place. So my last and bonus advice is play the tanks you like. You don't need to rush tier 10 and then think, oh my god, I got a tier 10 tank, I'm so good. P probably try to learn the mechanics first and then you can try to progress to tier 10. But play those tanks you like. And yeah, those are my 10 plus 1 bonus tip on how to be a better player in World of Tanks. I thank you so much for watching. If you have another tip or an advice, please let, it, let me know in the comment section below. Um, excuse me for my sometimes um, thinking for other words because, again, I'm not an English... Um, my, my English speaking tongue, no, my tongue, my mother tongue is not English, it's German, so sometimes I have to... Uh, remember such words which I want to say. 
If you have other advice for people or other tips, again, let me know in the comment section below. And I thank you so much for watching. And now I wish you a great day. Bye-bye.